trustee forum tonight. I want to um, thank all of you for taking time out of your evenings to join us. We have with us um, several trustees from our board. We have Dr. Curlis Colbert, Dr. Mike Mayhofer, and Dr. Rhonda Hennessy. And also with us tonight are our executive director, Ms. Karen Burgess, and our vice president of advocacy and professional relations, Mr. Bill Sullivan. So tonight we prepared a brief agenda for you, um, highlighting um, some of our board agenda, which will be taking place this Thursday evening and Friday at the MDA. As always at the end or at any point, if you have a question, please feel free to enter your or type your question in and we'll make every attempt to get those answered. Um, even if we've already moved beyond the next topic, I'll make sure we cycle back and address your question. So, this evening, I want to just begin by um, highlighting that we're very happy to have with us at our Thursday evening session, um, Dr. Kathy O'Loughlin. Dr. O'Loughlin is the Executive Director for the American Dental Association, and we have been attempting to um, get Dr. O'Loughlin at one of our meetings for some time, and I'm very happy that this is working out with her schedule. She'll be coming in on Thursday and spending um, several hours with our board and some guests, um, both you know, in conversation and dinner, as well as a more formal program that she'll be delivering to um, those in attendance. We have asked her to um, address a few things, and I thought I would share those with you so you'll know some of the topics, and then we'll look for her presentation and, of course, a follow-up um, after our board meets. So a couple of the topics we asked her to address was, one, the um, Healthy People 2030 um, paper and report that was released with ADA comments and particularly as some of these relate to dental benefit coverage. Um, she will also be updating us on the ADA Professional Transitions Program, particularly the business model and the potential overall impact on member value for that. Um, for many of us who are at the ADA annual session, we know that this is a pilot program just beginning very soon. Also, we've asked her to reflect on the future of ADA governance. We've heard um, several comments, policies brought forward as far as you know, how different things are going to be dealt with uh, at the ADA level, particularly uh, budget and dues. Of course, we are always interested in the ADA thinking on the Medicare dental benefit, as that is taking up um, some of the resources as they're discussing amongst the different councils. And then um, a conversation that became um, very dear to our district delegation was, um, as we're doing here, just the potential for using Zoom or other remote technology so that um, all members of um, the ADA um, who are voting for our candidates for president-elect would have the ability to meet with them. In Michigan, or in our ninth district with Michigan and Wisconsin, we've not had that opportunity for many years. And we look to use technology such as we're using tonight to help um, increase our access to all of our candidates. So again, we look forward to having her here. Um, we'll give you a follow-up after she meets. Um, and um, if you have any other questions or something that was burning that you thought we should add into our agenda, feel free to type that at the bottom and um, I can certainly um, pose those to her when she's here. So first on our um, agenda tonight is Dr. Curlis Colbert, and he's going to be giving you a overview of what is our generative topic. We have made every effort this year at our Board of Trustees to always spend a portion of our agenda in generative mode or something that's very uh, future focused um, so that our board becomes aware of topics. And sometimes out of these, we have developed um, different policies. We've done some strategy. And Curlis is going to be introducing you to this time's generative topic. So, Dr. Colbert. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Peters. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for attending tonight. The goal of medical dental integration is to provide whole person, integrated, patient centered, comprehensive care across the professions. This will require dentists to become better acclimated to practices common in primary care medicine. To that end, all dental students now receive training working with medical professionals to do three things. A, to enhance lines of communication between dentists and medical professionals. B, to develop referral networks between dentists and medical professionals. And third, to reduce negative risk management outcomes. 
So the trend in America today is to move dentistry from a siloed cottage industry of private or small group practitioners into a subspecialty of the national comprehensive system of healthcare, integrated healthcare. Along those lines, originally medicine and dentistry students were educated together. In 1840, the first dental school opened in Baltimore and that sort of separated the education between the two. In 1926, the very famous Dr. William J. Geis from Columbia University declared dentistry the oral specialty of medicine in which he actually proclaimed it to be a subspecialty to overall health. It's important that the integration of oral health and primary care become a desired outcome, especially in three areas. We have communication, coordination, and referral across the, the disciplines. So to provide this type of care, it's important to make sure that the mouth is always connected to the rest of the body. Okay, that sort of is the underlying premise of this whole thing. This need though is complicated by the fact that the evolution of dentistry occurred in isolation from other providers and other healthcare settings. The US healthcare system is changing, but changes within our own dental community are lagging far behind that of medicine. Few dental practitioners actually are aligned with large health organizations like Kaiser Permanente or even FQHC, where the dentists and the primary care physicians practice in proximity. A lack of shared understanding and communication across the professions places an unnecessary burden on the patients who are forced to navigate independent silos of care. So the navigation between these two healthcare systems must be bridged going forward. Uh, to make that happen, dental healthcare systems are going to have to be upgraded, to integrated, to include medical information that can be transferred between uh, the different practitioners. Um, man managed care professionals have this going on already for them. In med in dentistry, it's it's lagging a little bit behind. So the goal at the dental school is to actually pre pre prepare the students to actually be able to navigate these systems and communicate with their other medical professionals. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Hey, thank you very much, Dr. Colbert. You're welcome. Our next item on our agenda, um, Dr. Mike Mayhoffer is going to be um, discussing an item that came before us last time at our Board of Trustees meeting and looking at one of our policies of publishing disciplinary action reports in the journal from our State Board of Dentistry. Dr. Mayhoffer? Thanks, Deb. Uh, at the, as, as Deb said, at the last MDA Board of Trustees meeting, uh, a new item of business came up. And this new item of business uh, came from an MDA member dentist who uh, wanted to complain because um, his name had been published in the journal because the state had taken disciplinary actions against his license because he hadn't completed his CE requirements. And um, so Deb and the, the, the board decided that maybe it was time for us to revisit our policy of publishing uh, disciplinary actions of all Michigan dentists in the MDA journal. So what she did is she asked both of the two committees that are entrusted to look at ethics issues, uh, the uh, Committee on Dental Care and the Committee on Peer Review Ethics. And each of these committees met separately, independently, to look at this issue to see whether or not they believed it was still a member benefit to continue to publish the disciplinary actions of the State Board of Dentistry in the MDA Journal. And both committees discussed it at length. And both committees apparently came to the same conclusion that they thought it was, in fact, uh, of member value. In fact, they came up with a number of bullet points. There were six bullet points that both of the committees provided. I'm just going to read a few of them. This is, this is what they came up with. Uh, one of the points was that the committees are aware that publishing disciplinary reports could cause embarrassment for members. However, they believe that the MDA is a leader in the nation 
and stands apart from other organizations. Having this level of accountability is why the MDA is highly respected throughout the country. Additionally, with regard to continuing education requirements, the MDA regularly notifies members when their license is up for renewal. Additionally, there are practical benefits to members publishing this information. This information is valuable to members when hiring auxiliary staff, associates, or looking for a dentist to cover emergencies for the office. It is also valuable when referring patients to another practice. And finally, these reports can also work as a deterrent and it's an opportunity to educate and remind members that besides being held to the ethical standards, they are also held to the state's legal standards, which the MDA takes very seriously. So those were just some of the bullet points that these two independent committees came up with. And what the board's gonna do is look at these bullet points and have a further discussion of this at our next board meeting on Friday, and then make a decision as to whether we're gonna to continue to have board policy of publishing the disciplinary actions of the state board in the MDA journal. That's it. Great, thank you very much. Bringing forward some information and on our access to care proposals that our um, Committee on Insurance and Government Affairs looked at, Dr. Rhonda Hennessy will be discussing that. Dr. Hennessy? Thank you, Dr. Peters. Uh, resolution 654, an action item at the, at the board um, this weekend will be uh, access to care proposals. There are four proposals to help expand access to care that are currently MDA policy. There are two new proposals, one from the ADA and another from the Committee on Government Insurance Affairs under consideration. The four present policies are expand PA-161 program to include private practice dentists. This legislation ended in 2018 legislative session. Another, expand the scope of practice of the registered dental assistant. The MDA has been requesting the Board of Dentistry to expand the scope. The Board of Dentistry has agreed to, to some expansion except allowing the registered dental assistant to place all composite restorations. Three, increase the state's dental Medicaid reimbursement rate, utilizing the Healthy Kids Dental model. Four, increase funding towards the state's student loan repayment program. And five, a new proposal under discussion at the uh, Committee on Government Insurance Affairs was a tax incentive for treating Medicaid patients. The proposal would exempt income derived from Medicaid claims to be exempted from state income tax. Another pros proposal that was discussed at the meeting is that the MDA staff currently look into a resolution from the American Dental Association. That resolution, pursue federal legislative or regulatory efforts to require dental support in child custody orders, as in child support obligation. Also that it be further resolved, the constituent societies be urged to pursue the same legislative and regulatory efforts. The committee has recommended to pursue all these policies except the expansion of PA-161 program to include the private practice dentists. They feel this is not a priority since passage of Senate Bill 541 mid-level provider. The present resolution 654 is to add that the MDA ad advocate the state legislature to exempt income derived from Medicaid claims from state income taxes. Great, thank you very much, Dr. Hennessy. So, giving us a report on a background from our dental auxiliary work group, who've been meeting very hard um, and mainly been discussing um, the registered dental assistant, Mr. Bill Sullivan. Thanks, Dr. Peters. Uh, over the last several years, the MDA has been receiving many complaints from member dentists that they have a hard time finding registered dental assistants to work in their offices. As a result, the board put together what's called the Dental Assisting Work Group. Uh, this uh, work group has held several meetings over the past year, in addition to conducting a full survey of the members, which we had a very good participation rate. In addition, we've had input from uh, several of the dental assisting programs at Washtenaw Community College, Baker College, and Grand Rapids Community College. In addition, the Middle Michigan Dental Assistance Association has participated in our discussions as well. Based on the discussions that we've had and the survey, 
the work group was able to identify several problems. Uh, these problems included that member dentists were using on-the-job trained uh, dental assistants to perform RDA duties, uh, that member dentists did not really understand the value of the RDA to their practice, that there were many potential RDA students who were not aware of the RDA profession, schools were having a difficult time finding dental offices for RDA students to fulfill their 300 hours of clinical requirement required work. To help address these problems, the uh, Dental Assisting Work Group is proposing to the board uh, four action items. One is for the MDA Journal to publish an article on the difference between an RDA and an OJT, with particular emphasis on the duties that each can perform. In addition, the MDA should publish an article written by Dr. Dan Peters, who has extensive experience in this area, that would explain how a properly used and properly compensated RDA can increase the dental practice's bottom line. And that was one of the key discussions among the work group that came out is that there seemed to be a feeling that uh, the, the compensation of the RDA is a big part of the problem as well. A third action item was that the MDA should work with Dr. Dan Peters to develop a CE course on how a properly used RDA can increase practice performance in an era of decreasing reimbursement rates. And the final recommendation is that the MDA should develop a marketing campaign aimed at people ages 17 to 24 to show them that a professional career as an RDA is desirable. The focus would be to show people that the RDA is a profession and not just a job, and that the pay and benefits can and should be very good. Uh, these proposals are gonna be voted on by the board at the meeting on March 1st, and once that is done, uh, things can start moving forward. Great, thank you very much. Another item I'd like to make the um, attendees aware of is a bylaws change coming in front of the House of Delegates this year. You know, each year as we review the bylaws, there's just certain things that appear to us like, oh, we could perhaps improve upon that a little bit, or, um, you know, as we broaden out the scopes of some of the duties. And this one is uh, a bylaws change being um, forwarded to the House on how to fill the vacancy if it should occur in the speaker term mid-year. So currently our bylaws um, allow for the president to assume the duties of the speaker. Um, including running the meeting of the House of Delegates. Through some discussion, it, um, it was considered that this perhaps may become a little onerous to the, the, the president, particularly if there's a lot going on in the president's schedule, and perhaps it would make more sense to um, allow the president to um, appoint someone to that role. Um, as many of our House of Delegate members know, we've had additional House committees lately that have met under the direction of the speaker. Um, also, the president would have the option of appointing a kind of speaker pro tem or interim speaker who could facilitate the meeting of the annual session until the House would be able to elect a new um, speaker. So again, these are some bylaws provisions that are gonna come to the House you know, for the House's review mainly looking at how to fill the vacancy of a speaker if it should occur in the mid-year by, by allowing the president to have options. Um, they wouldn't have to do them, but have the option of appointing um, someone to fill in in those duties. So look for that as it comes forward. And next item on our agenda, uh, Ms. Karen Burgess, our executive director, is going to be going over our strategic planning. Thank you, Dr. Deb. Um, so at this board meeting and the March 1st board meeting, it is our practice to do end of year metrics updates. So I'm gonna share a number of those with you. The strategic plan report for the board is primarily an informational report. Um, looking at our membership numbers, for example, um, those uh, board members are learning that our membership market I see my internet connection is a little unstable, so apologies. Uh, that's all good news, though, on the strategic planning front. Our, our overall retention rate for active members is right on course at 96%, and our goal of enhancing the retention rate for our new 
uh, graduates as they go through the reduced dues program is also seeing improvements, so that is good. Um, if you look at our overall market, it reflects the fact that we are seeing quite a large number of retirees. Uh, our total number of members actually broke 5,900. We have 5,906, uh, including um, all categories. So that's all good on the membership front. Um, we also reported non-dues revenue. The trend in our non-dues revenue is up showing steady increases since 2015. So that is good news. What we are doing uh, to try and keep that moving in the correct direction is not just um, our new business arrangement with the dentist supply company, which is going to be providing uh, over 40,000 products available to MDA members starting May 1st, but um, rolling out our radiography training program to other states and we are also expanding our job board to include dental team members so that's all good the one kind of sad piece of information is information that you probably have experienced in your own portfolio um, the mda suffered as as most of us did uh, with the market downturn in 2018 our strategic plan goal is to do well in comparison to our benchmarks. So despite the fact that we took a little hit due to the market performance, um, our fund choices actually did well uh, overall compared to their benchmarks. So that is a good thing. Um, we have uh, going to be coming forward with the board um, related to strategic planning is putting forward a new process for environmental scanning. Uh, our current strategic plan runs 2016 to 2020. Uh, by the time we sit down to do a strategic planning retreat in 2020, uh, we really would like to have um, a lot of broad background information for the board uh, that they will have already processed. So the goal is to have a future focus, a new way of bringing trends and practice, uh, new practices forward to enhance the board's knowledge. So we will be bringing forward a new process for that. And um, just to let you know some of the topics that the board will be looking at uh, from an environmental scanning process. One is um, the integration of medicine and dentistry, which Dr. Colbert spoke on earlier this evening. Practice trends and growth in large group practices and DSOs, third party payers and dental reimbursement, kind of keeping your eye on other health professions, what is happening in pharmacy, medicine, nursing, et cetera, um, politics and legislation, both nationally and here in Michigan, uh, demographics and generational, have to keep our eye on both those retiring baby boomers and the new millennials, what is it that they're looking for? not to mention Generation Z coming up behind. Technology and science, very critical in dentistry. Uh, the dental supply market, that's changing rapidly. And of course, dental utilization and workforce and membership and member research. Those are all things that we would plan to continue to bring to the board um, on an ongoing basis, both at board meetings and between board meetings. So. Um, that is an update on your strategic planning process here at the Michigan Dental Association. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there was a question that came across, and though it's been answered in our format, I just did want to uh, highlight it in case others also have the question. Uh, it's pertaining to Dr. Mayhofer's report on the disciplinary action, and the question was, are all dentists on the report? And we do publish it exactly as we receive it from the Board of Dentistry. So all licensed dental professionals, whether they're our registered dental assistants, dental hygienists, or, or dentists, um, not just member dentists are included. So I did wanna highlight that because that popped up there. Um, I don't see any other questions at this time, but I will give you a few minutes. If there's anything that we talked about tonight that you have you know, a comment on, please. This is how your board can get some comments back as well. Take time to enter those for us. Also, if you have any questions about any of the topics that we brought up, 
Of course, this is, is not our complete agenda, but this are, are some of our highlights of some of the items that we thought would be of interest for you this evening. Um, we do have a very busy board agenda as we uh, move forward this week. Lots of items. Always is very busy on our this time of the year. Back on um, our member retention rates. Appreciate that from one of our volunteers. Thank you. Oops. A little bit more feedback on the on the licensing of other areas where that can be addressed. I'm sure the board would be looking at that. So very helpful. Wonderful. My last chance for any of our panelists, do you have anything else that you would like to add? Do you see any of the questions that come across there? Um, anything that triggered after you were done speaking? Go ahead and just give me a hands up and I can give you a few minutes. Yeah, Deb, um, there's a question from um, Jonathan Burns about uh, wouldn't it be best to go on michigan.gov or to online services to verify healthcare license? And put in the RDA, R, RDH or DDS name. Um, both of the committees discussed that, Jonathan. Um, and um, it says, while this information is readily available on the LARA website, the site is difficult to navigate and it can be hard to locate the disciplinary actions. So they thought it, was, it, would, it would be a little bit easier for everyone uh, to just publish them in the journal. I hope that answers your question. Dr. Deb? Yes. Did you see the question um, on the Q&A related specifically to the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry and Beaumont collaboration? I think uh, someone was asking if Dr. Colbert would like to speak to that. Yes. Yeah, you know what, I pulled that one, yes. Dr. Colbert, there's a question. Could we hear a little bit more about the University of Detroit Mercy Beaumont new collaboration in relation to the dental and medical connection? Yes, actually there is uh, in Crane's Business Detroit, a very nice, a very in-depth article dated uh, February the 17th, 2019. And it goes into how Dr. Axu has actually reached out to the Dean of the, uh, the medical school and how both of the deans have gotten together to start this in a collaborative effort. Um, other than that, uh, it's going to be four or five years going forward to work this particular situation out. But as I said before, Crane's uh, Business Detroit put out a really nice article on it. And this has been a long time coming. The deans of uh, both schools have worked very hard over the years to try to get this to come about. There's been not much discussion since 1995 when there was a lot of discussions about dental students actually receiving an MD degree during the first three years and then a DDS degree as a specialty. That particular discussion fell apart basically because dentists, dental faculty were not willing to go forward with that so hopefully i don't know if that's going to happen if we're going to actually go into another five-year program to get a combined degree but uh, hopefully some good things will come out of that thank you very much dr colbert you're welcome any other questions tried to clear them to make sure we got them all As always, always feel free to contact any of your board members and officers or your trustees if you have any questions or feedback before we go into our meeting on Thursday and Friday, and then look for the synopsis of the actions to be uh, public shortly thereafter. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the time of our panelists tonight. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of you guys at our board meeting on Thursday. Um, and to all of our members out there, stay warm. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all at annual session as we do dentistry down in Detroit or dentistry in the D. So we'll see you then. Until then, thank you much.